So now we're going to look at the square root of 1 minus i. And we want to use the Euler form right here. We computed that in the last, uh, well, the two videos before. So we're just going to use all this on the screen right here and then put 1 minus i into Euler form. So we already computed the radius was square root 2. That's all done right down here. Here's the radius computation. We did the angle either by looking, because this was a nice angle, or you can do tangent inverse. So we got negative pi over 4 either way. So let's write, we'll write the general Euler form r e to the i theta. So we have square root 2 e to the i negative pi over 4. You're probably going to be tempted to move your negative sign out front. And I recommend against that because in this form, it's super easy to see what your angle is. If you move the i out front, it is equal but now you have to use a few extra brain cells to remember that your angle is not pi over four, it's negative pi over four. And where would positive pi over four be? It would be up there. That's not what we're looking for. It is how you do conjugates, but we're not talking about conjugates right now. So let's go ahead, leave it in this form. Now we need the uh, power rule. So we'll write that down. So this is how you expand to powers. So if you have z to the r power, this is going to be r e, well, I shouldn't use r, z to the n. It's r e to the i theta. That's what our number z is to the n. And how do you apply powers? There's a product happening right here. So just like before, when you had good old numbers, if you had x times y to the c power, you can, as long as you're multiplying in here, you can distribute your power in x to the c, y to the c. So we're just going to use that property right there. The nice thing about this Euler polar form is that it lets you just apply all the algebra rules that you uh, have learned previously. So we're going to apply the n to that and then to that. So we have e to the i theta to the n power. So there's one more power rule that we need to use, and that's x to the y raised to the c power. When you have a power to a power, that's the same as multiplying the powers. Uh, I'm not going to talk about adding powers, uh, but you probably know that rule as well, but that's not applicable right now. We have a power taken to another power, which means you multiply them. And that's exactly what we're going to do to those right there. So we have e to the i theta times n. So this is all you need to do when n is an integer. And of course, integers you can write as this bold capital Z. And that means all the whole numbers, positive and negative and 0. So we can write all those numbers out quickly. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, dot dot dot. So that works anytime we have an integer. So it's very fast to take powers in polar form. What we're going to look at next is what happens when n is a fraction. So when n is, it's probably easier to write this as 1 over n. So when the power is a, when 1 over n is the power, we have a nth root. The most common nth root is a square root, so you're typically going to see n equaling 2. And that's when we do the example, that's what we're going to be using. So it looks really similar, z to the 1 over n. Now, looking at the top of the screen here, this is r e to the i theta 1 over n. So you're going to apply it to both pieces here. r to the 1 over n times e to the i. So we do multiply theta by 1 over n. However, we're going to get something extra. There's going to be extra roots that come out here. And what they are, they're going to be 
Remember, you can add as many rotations as you want, but you just have to cut them down by n. And this is going to be 4 k equals 0, 1, all the way up to n minus 1. So typically, n is going to be 2. So when n is 2, your k is going to equal 0 and 1. It's going to go up to 1 less than n. All right, so let's go ahead and apply the one-half power or the square root of one minus i. So I'm going to rewrite it into the r e to the i theta form. And our power is one-half. So that's square root two e to the i. And our theta was negative pi over four to the half power, so distributing the half power in here. So we got a square root of a square root, so we could write a few ways to write that. We have two to the half power raised to the half power, because remember square root is a half power, times e to the i. Now we have to look up and do that right there. Our n is two, so we have negative pi over four times one half plus 2 pi k over 2. And k equals a 0 and 1. So there's actually two different answers here. So let's go ahead, we'll write them both down. Here's our first answer. So 2 to the half to the half is 2 to the 1 fourth, you're multiplying powers. e to the i, when k is 0, that whole second part just drops off. So you have i, we do get pi over 4 times a half is negative pi over 8. So this is going to be our first root. Or now we'll do k is 1. So we have the same radius, 2 to the 1 fourth, e to the i. We get the same negative pi over 8, but this time our k is 1, not 0. So we get plus 2 pi over 2. We can definitely simplify this down. So it's 2 to the 1 fourth. All right, 2 pi over 2 is the same as 8 pi over 8. So common denominator, e to the i. So we have negative pi over 8 plus 8 pi over 8. It's going to be 7 pi over 8. All right, that will be your other root. If we add a third power, n would be 3 and I would get k equals 0, 1, or 2. And you can also go higher than 3 to 4, 5, 6 uh, root, whatever you want. So you're probably wondering how in the world does this all fit together? Well, when you multiply in polar coordinates, you add angles. So let's go ahead, put the really bad circle here. This radius is going to be square root 2. Actually, let's say the radius is 1. Let's just ignore the radius right now. Only worry about the angles. That's hard enough. That'll make your brain hurt just that alone. All right, so we'll look at the first right here. And let's go and get a fancy color. Go green. All right, so that one I'll draw in green. So where's, we're using a radius one because I'm ignoring that, that radius here. So we have negative pi over eight, where's that? Here's pi over four, so pi over eight's half as big, so it'll be right there. So this is e to the i, negative pi over eight. Now what happens when you square it, when you multiply it by itself, you're gonna, multi you're gonna add the angle to itself. So what's negative pi over eight plus negative pi over eight? Negative pi over four. So when you square this, you're gonna get the angle right here, which is e to the i, negative pi over 4, which you can write as e to the i negative pi over 8 plus negative pi over 8. Again, when you multiply angles, uh, when you multiply polar coordinates, you add their angles. All right, let's look at the 7 pi over 8. Where in the world is that? It's going to be very close to 8 pi over 8. It's going to be right here. So this is e to the i 7 pi over 8. What happens when you square that? 
So if we square it, remember we look for the square root. There's only one thing to do, which is take this power and multiply it in here, because you have a power of a power. And two times seven is 14. All right, so we got 14 pi over eight. So where's that? Just think 14 pi over eight. Uh, it's gonna be, if I think in terms of uh, pi over eight, two pi is 16 pi over eight. Take away two pi over eight. So you start here, go all the way around and then come back two pi over eight, look at that, you're exactly at e to the i negative pi over four. All right, so those are your two solutions. I'll circle the simplest forms and a little geometry lesson as to why this all works out.